Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 28th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to take a bit of a deeper dive into what happens if you don't stop burning fossil fuels and, and the various potential points at which you stop burning fossil fuels based on a, a particular scientific study and, and just a general understanding of, of how much carbon is available for burning in the form of fossil fuels. But before I get into that, I'd just like to talk about two aspects of, of climate policy and, and climate change response that are both very critical to peaking carbon emissions as soon as possible. And one aspect is, is promoting clean energy, which provides an alternative to fossil fuel burning and an economic incentive to keep fossil fuels in the ground. The other aspect is social and policy incentives to keep fossil fuels in the ground, which may sound like the other side of the coin, but it, it's a bit different. So, so in particular, the Sierra Club and 350.org and other environmental organizations like Greenpeace have been working very hard to try and provide social and political incentive for removing, reducing, and ultimately cutting off fossil fuel emissions at the, at the source. And, and presently, 350.org is involved in a campaign to try and convince the California government to commit to halting the extraction of fossil fuels from its territory by a certain date. And, and that, that particular drive is, is very important because it puts politicians in a position not just of, of, of calling a horse race between clean energy and fossil fuel industry, which, which can extend the lifespan of fossil fuels longer than it otherwise would be to directly working to curtail fossil fuel burning as rapidly as possible. So it's, it's, and it's very important to do that because if you get into a, a horse race kind of situation, you can get this long tail of fossil fuel burning from bad actors and uh, like bad actor industries and bad actor states. But if you, you get into curtailment of, of fossil fuel burning, it's a lot more likely that carbon emissions on a global scale are gonna peak sooner and, and hit net zero and net negative sooner. So, so why is this so important that, that we focus on halting fossil fuel burning as well as transitioning to clean energy? And in the most extreme example, I'm, I'm going to pull out a scenario, a climate change scenario called Wink 12K. And, and Wink 12K is actually worse than the worst case IPC scenario, IPCC scenario where fossil fuel burning continues to the end of the century, but, but where fossil fuel burning continues indefinitely and ultimately all conventional and unconventional fossil fuels are burned. And if you look at the, the total reserves of fossil fuels in both the conventional and the unconventional sense, it's 12 trillion tons of carbon. So if you don't have policies that, that eventually cut off, completely cut off fossil fuel burning, and set a moratorium on fossil fuel burning, and you have fossil fuel burning that extends indefinitely into the future, you ultimately get to wake 1-2K. And, and, and that's a scenario that is, is, is a nightmare scenario. It's, it's practically unimaginable. You're talking about atmospheric carbon dioxide levels in the range of 4,000 to 5,000 parts per million. So, what do the, the various scenarios look like? And, and, and the, 
the best case scenario is where we transition to clean energy and keep fossil fuels in the ground. And, and that, that, that generates a, an early peak in carbon, di carbon emissions and a, a rapid drop to, to zero carbon emissions and a stabilize, ultimate stabilization of carbon dioxide in a range that's, that's just slightly above the Holocene average due to various actions by human civilization. Beyond this scenario, this RCP3PD scenario, you have scenarios that range from bad and, and with probably some catastrophic impacts to absolutely terrible beyond anything that, that we have seen before in, in geological history, probably, if you, if you engage the Wink 1-2-K scenario. And, and why is that? But, well, one, it's because Wink 1-2-K, burning all the fossil fuels, probably produces as much or more atmospheric carbon dioxide and atmospheric greenhouse gases than the worst hothouse extinction in the history of the world, which was the Permian, Permian extinction. But because solar irradiance has increased over the past 250 million years, the net forcing at the top of the atmosphere, if you burn all the fossil fuels, is actually uh, rather worse by about 25% or 30% worse than, than the peak forcing estimated based on our understanding of paleoclimate during the Permian extinction event. So when people talk to you about, well, oh, they're, they're a little worried about, say, for example, losing aerosols and, and the difference between you know, the aerosol negative feedback of, say, for example, potentially 0.2 or 0.3 C or 0.4 or 0.5 C, and, and other potential responses to, to human-caused climate change, what we really need to look at is, is the primary driver, which is fossil fuel burning. And if you don't stop it, you end up getting into situations where scenarios run from bad to worse, to very worse, to absolutely ridiculously, obnoxiously, beyond anything we can probably possibly imagine, bad. So clean energy is very important, and, and it is the primary solution to human-caused climate change, transitioning to clean energy. But also, it's very important to support the environmental organizations that are pushing politicians and corporations and other in entities to keep fossil fuels in the ground because burning carbon is dangerous. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.